Another thing that Pythagoras theorem can be used for is to determine whether or not a triangle is actually right angled. Now, if you're being given this in terms of a test, something like that, the diagrams that you're going to be given are probably not going to be to scale, but they're not going to be. Um, and they're just going to give you a triangle and they're going to be like, hey, is this right angled? And they may or may not look, make the triangle look right angled at all. It's important to note that you've got to actually use the side lengths that they've given you to determine whether or not this is actually right angled or not. All right, so the figures themselves are not going to be to scale. They're not going to look right angled or not, whether they are or not. Okay, that's something that's really, really important to note. All right, now to be able to determine or like to be able to use Pythagoras theorem to determine whether a triangle is right angled or not, you actually need all three side lengths of the triangle. So you can see here there are two triangles that we've got here. We actually do know what all three side lengths are. So how do we do this? Well, the good thing about this is a really quick process once you know what you're doing. And what we know about you know, Pythagoras theorem is if the triangle is right angled, and that's something that's really, really important over on the right here, if it's right angled, the area of the longer side squared is going to be equal to the area of the two shorter sides squared added together. All right, so this, if this is true, the triangle has to be right angled. If it's not true, then the triangle is not right angled. So we follow a simple step by step to be able to determine this. The first step is to label our triangle. Now, how we label our triangle is really, really important. The longer side has to be C, okay? So if the triangle is right angled, the longer side is known as the hypotenuse, and the longer side is always C. So this has to be C here, okay, in triangle one. The two shorter sides, it doesn't matter how we label them, okay, as long as they're labeled A and B. Doesn't matter which one's A, which one's B, okay. So the next step is to write out our formula. So if this is right angled, C squared, we're going to color code it to make it easy to follow again. It's going to be equal to A squared plus B squared. And what we're basically doing is just checking, hey, does C squared equal A squared plus B squared? If it does, fantastic, right angled. If it doesn't, then clearly it's not going to be right angled. So we substitute 6 for my C, so that's going to be 6 squared. It's going to be equal to, my A is 2 here, so that's going to be 2 squared plus my B of 4. So that's going to be 4 squared. So we're now checking this. 6 squared is going to be 36. A squared is going to be 4, and B squared is going to be 16. And those of you that are already looking at this, we can quite clearly see that 36 is not going to equal 4 plus 16. So we can already see here that 36 clearly does not equal 4 plus 16, which is going to be 20. So what can we determine from that? Well, we can instantly determine Pythagoras theorem wasn't true, so therefore this is not a right angle triangle. And that's basically the step by steps, okay? We basically label the triangle, we write out our formula, substitute the information into our formula, and check to see whether it balances. If it does, it's gonna be right angled. If it doesn't, it's not gonna be right angled. So let's look at triangle two of a situation where we've got a triangle here that we've got to determine once again, is it right angled? So let's quickly apply our steps. First step, labeling the triangle. C is what's most important. C has to be the right angle. Oh, sorry, the right angle, the hypotenuse, okay? So if this is a right angle triangle, the right angle would exist here, okay? Obviously this triangle doesn't look right angled, but we don't know whether it is or not, okay? So now we've got to go through and label A and B. It doesn't matter which order we label it. So I'm going to have A be my 8, B me my 15, and we write out our formula here. So C squared will equal A squared plus B squared. Oops, let's just color code it still. So that's going to be B squared. So now we substitute our information in. So C is 17 squared, which will be equal to 8 squared plus 15 squared. So now we evaluate this. So 17 squared is going to be 289, which we've got to check to see if that's equal to 8 squared, which is 64, 
plus 15 squared, which is going to be 225. So when we do 64 plus 225, you will find that that does equal 289. So the fact that this does work, and it has to be exactly, okay? So the fact that this is true does tell us that this is in fact a right angle triangle. You cannot form a triangle with side lengths, 17 units, 15 units, and eight units that is not right angled, okay? So we can instantly conclude here, let's do this in blue. Therefore, uh, this is a right angle triangle. Now, the only thing that you might be asked as an extension of this is where would that right angle occur? And that's the reason to know that the right angle will always be opposite the hypotenuse or in between the two shorter sides. So the right angle would be located here in this case. So basically to determine whether a triangle is right angled, we essentially label our triangle first with our A, B and C. C always being the longer side, A and B just being the two shorter sides. It doesn't matter which way around that you label that. Then you substitute it into our Pythagoras theorem formula and check to see whether it balances. If it does balance like we've got over here, it means that we've got a right angle triangle. If it doesn't balance, then it means that we don't have a right angle triangle. Mm -hmm.